10 years of good luck. They definitely look a lot better now than from when we caught them. They're nice and clean. Look at the scales. It's kind of like bluish, kind of silverish, metallicish. We have our armored catfish right here, AKA Cascadu, AKA the Hasa. Check that out. So insane that we're about to eat one of these fish. Let's try it out. Come here. We got water. All right. All right, y'all. A little fish. What's going on, Iguana Gang? Thanks for checking out this video today. I'm with my uncles. We're in the Everglades and we're going after invasive armored catfish. Look at that. These fish known in Trinidad, Guyana, and South America are a staple food source and considered a delicacy. Here in South Florida, they are an extremely invasive species. And today, we have special permission to go out there and see how many we can catch. Let's get it. It's out right here. So obviously, we're doing the invasive fish removal. We're getting some of these armored catfish. But this is a native bowfin right here. We're gonna get him out of the net. We're gonna send him back. This thing, this thing right here is basically a living, breathing dinosaur. Florida swamps, look at this beast right here. Wow, such an amazing creature. Go ahead, put him back. Go ahead, buddy. Good. All right, it's pretty unknown how these fish got here. Some speculate they were brought here via the pet trade. Some also say people purposely released them back in the day, and now populations have exploded out of control. However they got here, they are pretty established, and they're terrorizing the Florida Everglades. They root, and they cause a lot of damage to the banks, and they compete with native species on food and territory. Plus, they can lay hundreds of babies during the breeding season, and once they reach a certain size, well, not much is really going after them due to their armored, scaly exterior. There's a few different ways to catch these fish. You can use a hook and line with a small worm, but the most popular way is throwing the cast net. The bigger the net, the more potential you can catch. But also, there are a lot of snags on the bottom, and you know, you can risk ruining perfectly good $300 net, which we did. But we were successful at getting these guys, although cleaning the net is kind of a pain in the rear because their prickly fins get caught up in it, and it takes a little bit to get everything cleared up. As you can see, the captain is pretty professional at throwing this net, pancakes for days. And my uncle apparently said these fish are pretty tasty. Kind of hard to believe. They're kind of small and they're kind of smelly and scaly. But these guys know what they're talking about. Apparently, it's a delicacy. So if we can fill this bucket up, we're going to see if we can do a catch, clean, and cook on these armored catfish. It seems like a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. You guys look like you guys are doing, you know, got it down to basic science. We've been out here for like what, maybe an hour, maybe less. And look, already a half bucket, half a bucket, dude. That is insane. Good news is though, these invasive fish, believe it or not, are actually edible. Okay, people do eat them. So we got some tilapia right there, and then we got all the armored cats right here. Uh oh.
Don't tell me one of the walking catfish got you. Yeah. You hit? Yeah. Now the dangers of catching these fish are pretty obvious. Right here, right? I mean, you can net a gator. One you can net a venomous walking catfish. Yeah. Or, you know, you can have horrible. unexpected troubles on the water, which can leave you vulnerable for a multitude of different things. No risk, no reward, they say. And of course, any native fish caught Actually, or game fish caught are released right here, back, back. Since we're using casting to catch invasives. Back, Off this one goes. Be free. You got one too. Gorgeous specimen right here. This is this is the uh, the bowfin fish right here. Basically a living, breathing fossil. This thing can breathe air, and this thing is out here in the Everglades. Native species, so we're gonna go ahead and throw him back as well. This is not what we're out, out here looking for. There anybody? There he is. These are what, we have, what we're after, guys. Look at those fish right there. Wow. Another invasive fish right here, tilapia. Good eating too, not farm raised, wild tilapia. So the farm raised ones are, eh. these ones out here, people bought them as food and just like the iguanas and the other fish, they escaped and now they're taking over. But like I said, a lot of these invasives are good food, which is good news for us. Go ahead, throw him in there. This right here is the culprit that got you, huh? Mm. This is a nasty thing right here. Walking catfish. Did I just walk it? My uncles are basically pirates. They love to be on the water, hang out with plenty of ladies, and drink plenty of rum. And of course, catch fish and do some hunting. Let's pour us a cold one and let the fishing begin. Lights, camera, action. We have the new spot. Can the boys see some fish? Of course, you guys remember my uncle Willie Ray, the infamous iguana cook. Look at those perfect circles. Perfect, perfect, perfect. They would have gone receive it this time. This is about an hour and 20 minutes in since the trip has started. And I'm not gonna lie, my uncle and the captain, well, their hard work was throwing the net dragging it up, cleaning it from all the invasive catfish. This is definitely a labor of love to get this food. I'm wondering, why are they working so hard to get this food? Is this food really that tasty? My uncle let me in on a little secret. He says, uh, nickname of this fish is called the lobster fish. Lobster fish, eh? It's got a hard shell. Is the meat inside actually good like lobster? Big tilapia. Hmm. Guess we're gonna find out, y'all. Send it on its way. The day goes on, the nets keep going, out in the boat, fish keep coming back in. These boys are working like clockwork, and it seems like their hard work is definitely paying off. We've only been out here for about two hours, catching a vibe, drinking some drinks, and just enjoying the sport of fishing with our family. Looks like we might be running out of fuel I'm running out of patience a little bit. So I tell my uncle, let's go to a different spot and see if we can try to get more of them in a shorter amount of time, but also strategically kind of be near the area where we can go back home 
But the boys want to stop. The boys want to throw some nets. So I'm not going to stand in their way. Let their intuition <laughs> nice throw, pay boy. and go. And hopefully we will reap <laughs> some rewards. I see bubbles maybe, in maybe net. not. You got drink before you pull up this net. Oh wow. Now what would be a fishing trip without a good fishing or hunting story? Now, Chef Willie, he had a couple stories. And one that he was telling me was kind of funny. It was an adventure when him and uh, the captain was out in the bushes looking for a hog. Got confronted by a hog, but my uncle, he only had a 22 uh, pistol with him. Took a couple shots at the hog. Hog didn't go down at, at first. Gave him a couple more. Went up to him and had to finish him with a blade. Moral of the story, what he learned, hey, you're out there in the bush, make sure you got a 9 or a 40 cal, just in case you get front confronted by one of those big fat hogs. Yeah? Yeah. So, no, how you feel after the bite, the, the sting? You all right? Yeah. Okay, cool. When did that sting him? Yeah, it could get you sick, depending if it hits a vein or something, because the, the venom will go through you. Yeah. What's up? It's the Iguana Boy, Dylan. What's up? Watch out. All right. See you guys out there. <laughs> That's one of my buds. That's the Iguana Boys, Dylan. Oh. Gotta clean all the swamp matter out. That's, that's a lot of the stuff these fish are feeding on out here. You see all that organic matter right there? Attracts uh, bugs, crustaceans, shrimp, little fish. And then these guys out here, they're out here. So no, what do, what do these ca uh, ca armored catfish eat? Uh, if we catch them, I hope we um, use um, worms. Worms, but in, out here they're just eating worms and stuff, right? Yeah, I guess whatever. What, catfish. Yeah, whatever a regular catfish we eat, wow. I'm curious though, how do you think these things got out here in the Everglades, man? I think he's, um, I know they was up in Orlando area. I guess people brought, brought them as... Pets or something? Put them in tanks to clean the tanks. Ah, okay. You feel a tilapia in there? Bust the net? Right there. Nice. Look at the size of all these fish in here. All the natives go back. That's what we're learning right now. I learned sometimes if you just be quiet and listen and observe, you can learn a lot. And it's just so therapeutic watching the captain throw this net. It's like magic. To watch the sky all day. common American name for this fish is called the brown hopolo catfish. They are from the Amazon, South America, and the Caribbean. This fish right here can survive in extreme drought conditions where they will burrow in the mud and be able to stay in life in a protective cocoon underneath the surface of the earth. This fish does not die easily, okay? He can stay alive for hours, even days out of the water and some people are superstitious and they believe eating this fish does provide medical benefits physically and mentally. Wait, 
let us run right there. Along catching dozens of these invasive armored catfish, we stumble across a golden Asian carp. Now, what is this fish doing out here in the Everglades? Carp out here, too. Golden carp right now, boy. Ten years of good luck. The Everglades is truly majestical, magical place. A lot of respect is deserved out here. You gotta remember, there are giant alligators, and anything can happen at any moment, especially when you're on the water. Make sure. All right, Joe. Hey, guys, we are back at the camp. Real quick, check it out. Look at all these armored catfish that we got out of the Everglades. Absolutely insane. And you guys can see right there, there's an abundance of these things. Uh, there's not too much things eating them. My uncle told me that alligators will actually eat them, but. As you guys can see, there's a ton of them out there. There's no shortage. We also got a lot of tilapia right here as well. Bunch of them right here. We just pulled up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these guys, put them on ice, and then we will get some. And we might even do a catch, clean, and cook. I have no idea, honestly. I gotta see what the family's doing, see if they want to eat some of these fish. And then maybe we can do a video, all right? Stay tuned. All right, guys, hey, we are back at the base camp. You guys seen all those fish we caught? Pretty spectacular work. There they are right there, getting nice and cleaned. And check it out, the invasive armored catfish. Look at that thing. Wow. Look at that guy, so prehistoric looking. Look at the scales. Oh my goodness. You know what it reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of like a gator gar or armor, but it's a catfish. Guys, these things are out here, they eat worms, they burrow in the banks, and there's no natural predators other than alligators. I mean, how many of these can an alligator catch? Or is it even worth his time? Probably not. One of the reasons why they're invasive. Now guys, these armored catfish, they're eaten all over the world where they are native. Trinidad, Guyana, South America. In Trinidad, they call them Castudu. Guyana, they call them Hasa. And in Latin America, they just call them, they just call them food, all right? I don't know what they call them. Drop some comments. Anyway, speaking of food, we're out here in the kitchen. We're gonna get these guys all cleaned up. We're gonna make a nice, wait, Del. So Del, what do yeah. you think about this fish, bro? Uh, I don't think I would eat it. It don't look something that, it, don't look like, it doesn't look appetizing. It doesn't look appetizing, nah. right? I'm thinking the same exact thing. Scissors, pop off the fins like that. Okay. And then you wanna cut off the bottom fins. And that tail right there, that needs to come off as well. It's got a very weird smell to it, I'll tell you that. What does that smell like to you, dude? I just smell salt water. It's very, let me get another one. It just smells fishy. It smells fishy? Like, yeah. It smells like salt fish, weird swamp thing. I don't know what it smells like, guys. But we're gonna go ahead and clean this up. And then you, then you wanna go in from the belly like that. Bust the belly, take off the little fin. There we go right there. All cleaned up. They look kind of like mullet. Wow. It's insane armored catfish right here. Supposedly, this is a delicacy. I want to really see what the hype's about. I've been hearing a lot of cool stuff from my family about these things. A lot of man hungry. Yeah, buddy. Uh, you know, they definitely look a lot better now than from when we caught them. They're nice and clean. Look at the scales. It's kind of like bluish, kind of silverish, metallicish, kind of grayish. Apparently, guys, like I said, it's a delicacy in Guyana and Trinidad. I don't know what other parts of the world eat these fish, but if you eat them or your family eats them, let me know in the comments where you guys are from. The iguana, son.
Yeah, it's smells good. So that's the curry and you put like some seasoning in there, huh? Wow, look at that. All the herbal right there. Wow, it smells like, uh, what is that? It smells like pesto or like chimichurri sauce or something. No, we can eat. We're gonna add some curry mango. Kind of darkened it up a little bit. Oh, you can't smell. No, no, wait. Look at the line. These are, these are curried mangoes. <laughs> Why they add this? I, I'm guessing just to increase the flavor a little bit. No, it's so nice to cut it. Put the seasoning on the fish. Oh, God. <laughs> That's it. Let that do its thing, we'll be back. Not only I go get the dog and cook it. Very good. So apparently when the scales are kind of loose, then you know it's cooked. So I think we're almost there. Things are looking nice and soft. Nice and cool. Let it cool down. And give us some of this armored catfish. Cascadu, Hassa, whatever you want to call it, it's going down. It is the moment of truth. We have our armored catfish right here, aka Cascadu, aka the Hassa. Check that out. So insane. Now we're about to eat one of these fish. Quick, this is what you do. See that? Go like this, apparently. You want to try to like peel back the meat. I've never done this before, so they're telling me just do it like that. Yes, check that out right there. Look at that. So after you cook it, I guess the armored shell just comes right off and then you're left with a nice, beautiful piece of fish. So just break a piece of that. You can see the texture of the fish right there. Another interesting thing they told me is the fish has no small little bones like other fish. There's no small bones. It's just got the outer shell and the spine. Very interesting. That looks like a piece of uh, good meat right there. I ain't gonna lie. Look at that. Look at the texture of it. Kind of looks like lump crab meat right there. Let's go ahead and pop this in the old keister. Give her a taste. Dip it in the curry sauce. Look at that. Wow. Mm. You know what's weird? Speaking of lump crab, like what I said it looks like. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. It tastes like a mix of crab and shrimp. <laughs> wow. Guys, check it out. Let's do it again. This is a weird fish, guys. It's got a shell, an outside shell, just like a crustacean. We can breathe air and live in mud for years. And look at the meat on it, look. There's no little bones either, it just comes right off. Look at this. I guess you just get it like that, and then hit it like that, and then you'd eat that with some rice. Like I said, a little fishy, a little bit crabby, a little bit swampy, and a little bit saltwatery. Is it good? Oh yeah. We're gonna wrap the video right there. I just wanted to show you guys the cooking and the taste test of the armored catfish, AKA the cascadu. Um, people eat them in Trinidad, people eat them in Guyana. Some people even eat them in South America. Drop some comments and let me know where else do they eat this fish? And also, would you ever eat an armored catfish, guys? Drop the comments, let me know. One more time, I'm gonna show you the meat. I know it's gonna make y'all hungry, but look at that. There's no little bones. See that main bone right there? That's it. And what a lot of people do is they'll eat that and they'll like suck the, the shell off the sauce off of it and just mix it with the rice. It's phenomenal though. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the fishing. Hope you guys enjoyed the hunting, the cooking. Um, it's the Iguana Man signing out. And we will see you guys on the next video. Make sure you subscribe with the bell on. Peace.